Bonjourno everyone. This video is brought to you by Who Knows Wins. Click the link in the description to download the Who Knows Wins app. Compete against me and others for a chance to win up to £5,000. Just in this week's pot, the more people that get involved, the higher the pot goes. Unlike other accumulators, you do not have to win and get right every single prediction. Whoever gets the most predictions correct out of those 10 games wins. Make sure you click our link in the description though. Deposit £5 and good luck. Happy Friday everyone. Eddie Howe's press conference reaction here. Some big, big news to get through on the fitness of the likes of Alan St. Maximin. So let's just dive straight into it. Actually before that, apologies there was no tune therapy last night. Um, I was in London all day filming with DR Sports for some round table debate show. So that'll be out next week. And the weeks after on their channel, great stuff. Make sure you tune into that. So yeah, tune therapy will be back next week. On to the news then. Late call on Alan St. Maxman. Now obviously St. Maxman has been pictured this week. Looks like he's off to space. Looks like he was on his way to NASA. Elon Musk. But uh, he wasn't. He was just getting some rehab. He was in Monaco getting some treatment there on his injury. But they're going to make a late call on him for tomorrow's game away to Brentford. Um, intensive treatment is what Eddie Howe called it. And uh, we know he's not long term, so fingers crossed he can play a part tomorrow. If I'm being honest, I don't think he will. I don't think they'll risk him. I don't think they'll feel the need, no disrespect to Brentford, to risk him. I mean, they didn't play him last week against West Ham. Obviously, a side pushing top four. I don't think we're going to risk him against a side like Brentford, who we can go above if we win tomorrow. I just don't think it's worth it. If, if, that, if that injury gets aggravated for the sake of one game against Brentford, especially with the games we've got coming up, you know, we've got was it Brighton next weekend. But then after that, obviously, we've got a few midweek games, like Southampton away on a Thursday night. Don't risk him. Don't risk him. Just move on. As much as we love Maxi, move on. Because Ryan Fraser is okay. Now, Ryan Fraser could do a job there, obviously, depending on what how he wants to do. He's going to mix things around. But, you know, uh, Murphy obviously came in last week, did well. But Ryan Fraser went off injured the other day. He's okay. He looks like he'll be fine for tomorrow. So there is some good news. Now, the other big talking point is right back. Will Kraft play again? We obviously know Trippier is out for ages. Out for pretty much most of the season. Now, Manquillo has been training this week. He's got through a couple of training sessions, says Eddie Howe. He's not 100% fit, but he's getting closer to being available. So again, that one sounds like it's too soon for Manquillo. You know, it's too soon for him. I think it's it's going to be the same. Probably is going to be the same team that, that played against West Ham and played very well against West Ham. Deserved draw and probably should have got a win. So we'll keep that. Team, I would imagine, again, I, I can't see the point in risking Man Manquillo. I, I can't see the point in it. Um, if he's only had a couple of training sessions, why rush him back? Why rush him back and then have him in Jeff for months? Ease him back into it. Get another full week's training under his belt next week and then have him in for next Saturday. I don't think Javi will be risked either. Every week, Eddie Howe is going to be asked this until he starts and plays regularly. Where's Bruno? What's the crap with Bruno? He said Gomez is keen to play and sure he can do it to help the team. He's trained very, very well and mentally he is in a good place. You understand the team has been performing well and the chemistry in the midfield has been very good, hence the reason why he can't get in. Um, he says he hasn't physically been knocking on his door, but he has probably mentally been knocking on his door and asking the questions of when can I get in, do you know what I mean, without, without actually kicking, the, kicking off the hinges. Um, How said he's an intelligent player and I think he understands his position. We also know what's on the horizon, lots of games to come. Fixture congestion will be packed as the season unfolds, so he will have a lot of opportunities to cement his place in his team. There's going to be chances you're going to have to rotate. You know what I mean? Isn't it we're meant to play five games in ten days or something when if we play that Palace game on the Sunday if they don't get through in the FA Cup against Stoke? So there's a lot of games coming up, um, and that's when the squad rotation comes in hand. That's when it comes in hand. You have these players to bring them in, to drop players, to fresh players up. So... Yeah, I don't think Bruno will play tomorrow either. He won't start tomorrow. Again, why change the winning formula? This team's unbeaten in six. The chemistry in the midfield is so good. We've seen Woodock score his first goal of the season the other day. We've seen Jordan on Boston again. We've seen Shelby playing well. You can't change it. You just can't change it at the minute. You really? Why would you? We're winning games. But we're unbeaten. You know what I mean? So it's going to take a case of getting beat for someone to deserve to be dropped out. Keep it the way it is. As much as we're, we love Bruno already, we can see he's a baller. We know the things he's done in France. We know... He's class and he wants to play. Patience, right? Patience. He will be playing games soon. And he will be unreal for us for many years. Anyhow, also bigged up the impact of Dan Byrne, Big Byrne Dog, and Matt Target. Saying Dan's fitting in really well. And so has Matt on the left-hand side. 
Um, Dan has been composed, talked well, and has leadership qualities. <laughs> Les Sells is never getting that armband back, is he? And um, both have taken what we've done, asked them to do excellently. And really helped our team out and played with both of them. They have been, haven't they? I mean, Matty Target has surprised me. I, I rated Dan Byrne big time, especially after the season he's had. He's going to be full of confidence with how well he was playing at Brighton at centre back. But uh, Matty Target's just took the it straight away, hasn't he? See how much he wants it. He wants that permanent move. He's playing out his skin for it. So long may that continue. Eddie Howe on Premier League survival. He said no team down the bottom will give up. It's going to go right down to the end of the season. I mean, it probably is, but I bloody hope it doesn't. Can't be honest with that. All that stress, survival, suddenly is shite. But we have to take care of our own business, and that's consistently winning games or getting points or trying to elevate ourselves from danger. So obviously there, you know, we beat Brentford, we we'll go above them this weekend. You've got other teams in the mix playing the likewise teams. Norwich away at Southampton tonight. Um, can Burnley carry on? I think they're away at Palace. You know, Leeds early kick off against City, is it? Or Spurs? Spurs, I think. But like how we're saying there, it is in our hands now. Four points above the likes of Watford and that, and with the game or two in hand on Brentford and stuff above them. So, like Eddie says, just focus on us. We don't need to think about other teams now, unlike when we did a couple of months ago. You know, like, you obviously still keep an eye on them, and it was a blow the other night, barely beating Spurs. But we do our job, we'll be all right. We'll be all right. Eddie Howe on Newcastle's current run of form, he said the transfer window enabled us to add some very good people to the group. But the players have already had it progress through the weeks. That as a mix has been a powerful one for us. That's what I mean, because I keep on getting these things, people saying to me, like, oh, it's just because you spent loads of money. It's like, mate, them players, Bruno hasn't kicked the ball. Yes, Target's been good, he was on loan. Bain was £30 million from Brighton. And Chris Wood, I don't think I'm going to Chris Wood, can't be honest. <laughs> Anyhow, on tomorrow's opponent, Frank has done a brilliant job at Brentford, getting them promoted last season in the manner they've played this season. Um, we don't underestimate them, especially at home. Yeah, this is the thing that worries me, man, because we know... Brentford haven't won in about seven games. Ericsson could be playing. Ivan Tony could be back. Doesn't bode well then, kind of stats and all that box, is it? But going to be positive. Going to be positive. Um, yeah, so there it is. There's the press conference roundup. Let us know what, how you are feeling heading into tomorrow's game. Ken will be back with his lineup prediction tonight. I'll be back tomorrow morning as I'm on the train to London for a pre match video, as always, the match day build up chat. Um, but I'll be on Day Sports again, Saturday football show. Tune in to that, because if you want like a live watch along reaction, I'll be watching the game. Obviously, the whole thing is like a soccer Saturday show, you know, we'll react to the scores across the country as they go in. But I'll be watching the Newcastle game, just me, so whenever anything happens in that game, I'll be talking about it. So take a live watch along, take we're doing a watch along. Do you know what I mean? So tune in to DR Sports if you aren't at the game for that. And we'll keep you up to date. Great panel, great crack. And uh, I'll be back after the game for a match reaction as well. Subscribe to my channel TV and enjoy yourselves.